Welcome to the year 1998. The new millennium is fast approaching, the World Wide Web continues growing, and Microsoft just wrapped up development on Windows 98, the company's next release of their computer operating system, due to be released in the summer. Just three years prior, the company brought a drastic shift to the Windows operating system with the release of Windows 95 which replaced the familiar program manager with the Windows Explorer, Taskbar, and Start Menu, technologies that were designed to make using a computer easier than ever. While Windows 98 had more of a focus on incremental improvements, since its user interface largely resembles Windows 95's, it still brought many welcome changes to the operating system, including features that are still enjoyed by Windows users today. Things like multi-monitor support, disk cleanup, and even Windows Update. And as this OS was released at a time when the World Wide Web was becoming more and more available to the average consumer, it focused heavily on web-related features. Internet Explorer and Outlook Express were bundled with the operating system right when it launched. But this focus also extended to the Windows shell itself. Windows Explorer was completely overhauled and made to look and function more like Internet Explorer by adding an address bar and navigation controls. We also saw the introduction of Quick Launch and Active Desktop. But how did Microsoft make the jump from Windows 95 to 98 over the course of only three years? In today's video, I'll be answering that question by taking you through six development builds of the operating system, each one compiled at a different stage in the development process, and I'll be showcasing some of the major changes that occurred over the years. Let's get started. Our story begins about a year after Windows 95 was released in late 1996 when Microsoft Codename Memphis Build 1351 was compiled. This is an alpha development build of Windows, and it actually is the earliest confirmed build that was leaked, meaning that there could have been builds compiled before this, but we just don't know about them. Now unlike some of the other development history videos that I've done, where the first build we take a look at largely resembles the previous Windows version, this build of Memphis actually makes a lot of visual changes. Memphis is the codename that was used internally to refer to this next release of Windows at the time, but it would eventually be released as Windows 98. Our first sign of change occurs on the setup screen, where we can see that an entire new layout is present. For reference, here is what Windows 95's setup process looks like. This build of Memphis introduced the sidebar, which listed a set of steps that the installer would go through and also changed the background and images displayed when setup is copying files. The first boot screen, however, is almost identical to what we saw in Windows 95, with the exception of the text Windows 95 being changed to say Memphis. And this is something that would be seen across the entire system, as many, but not all, references to Windows 95 have been changed to say Memphis. We can even see this in the About box and on the Welcome window that appears when we log into the system for the very first time. The standard boot screen has also been completely changed and identifies itself as a developer release of Memphis. This build also includes new versions of both Internet Explorer and Internet Mail. Now, I had to run this build of the OS in safe mode, but normally the icons on the desktop would use the plus 95 icon set. It also adds the themes as well as the full window drag and font smoothing features from plus 95. You'll also notice a plus tab in the display properties, which is just how plus 95 behaves. It's also the first build to include support for ACPI. This allows the operating system to turn off certain devices like the disk drive when not in use and control the amount of power given to each device on the system. An example of something that is still identical to Windows 95 is the Explorer windows. They do not have the address bar or navigation controls and folders will still open up in new windows. Next up is build 1415, a beta 1 build compiled on March 17, 1997. About three months have passed since build 1351 was compiled. The setup screen for this build is slowly coming together. We now have a background that's close to what we saw in the final release, however the sidebar's color is still different. We still have the progress bar and info blurbs in the same style as the last build. 
The first boot and regular boot screens are both identical to what we saw in 1351 as well. But these similarities will end once we log in, as there have been some massive overhauls done to the desktop and Windows Explorer. Every program, document, and folder across the entire system can now be opened up by a single click. When hovering over an icon, the mouse pointer will change to the hand symbol and the item will become selected after a couple of seconds. And yes, you only have to click one time to open up something. While it may seem like a simple modification at first, it drastically changes the way that you use the operating system. I assume Microsoft was testing out a new way to interact with icons on the system, but would ultimately revert back to the way things worked in previous Windows versions for the final release of Windows 98. Opening up my computer reveals an all new interface. We have a new background, menu bar, and address bar with navigation controls. However, the design and layout are not yet finalized, and the background would be dropped in the final release. You're now able to navigate through directories without having to open up a new window for each folder. This was one of the major features introduced in Windows 98, making the Windows Explorer function more like Internet Explorer by giving it an address bar as well as back and forward buttons. There's also a sidebar that gives statistics about the hard drives used and free space. And just like in the final release, you can type a web address into Explorer's address bar and it will navigate to that web page. The control panel has been completely redesigned as well to fit in with the new Explorer. When you have something selected, a brief description of the item will appear in the sidebar. Throughout the operating system and its setup process, we still see mentions of Microsoft Memphis. However, Winver still identifies the system as Windows 95, and on the setup CD, all the contents are contained inside of a folder called Win98. The layout of the start menu is still the same. However, the sidebar has been updated with the Memphis branding. To the right of the start button, we can see the new quick launch area with sliders to adjust its size. This was a welcomed new feature in Windows 98, as it allowed you to make easy to access shortcuts to commonly used applications right on the taskbar. Unlike in the final release though, if you delete everything from the Quick Launch folder, Outlook Express, Inbox, and MSN will stay, as they appear to be permanently embedded in the Quick Launch area. They will just become non-functional buttons. There's also another button to the right of the system tray, and it's actually a Show Desktop button, a feature that would not be implemented like this in a final release of Windows until 12 years later, with the release of Windows 7 in 2009. Here, the button actually has two states. Clicking on it once will show the desktop and display a pushed-in icon, and clicking on it once more will restore all of your windows. This is exactly how the modern version of this feature works, but the button itself does not change. We also have an early version of Windows Update. There's an icon on the desktop called Internet System Update, which opens up a web page with Internet Explorer. Going into the settings category in the start menu, you'll see a new icon for settings wizards. This actually opens up a new tool that lets you launch certain control panel applets from a new interface. It looks like this was intended to make it easier for people to change some common system settings. Here you have a list of functions, with a description of each one when you hover over it. There's also a link to open up the full control panel. Build 1511 has the redesigned setup screen, which is very close to the final implementation we saw in Windows 98. The major differences are with the icons on the left side, as well as the references to Memphis. We also have animated text blurbs that fly in from the right side, which did not appear in the final release. The first boot screen has been completely changed, and looks more like the regular boot screen seen in this build, which now identifies the OS as a Memphis Beta 1 release. This new design continues into the next setup phase. But by the time we get to the desktop, you'll notice that many features have actually been removed rather than added. The Show Desktop button and Quick Launch area are no longer in the taskbar, and the Explorer has reverted back to the way it looked in Windows 95 by default. That's not to say there aren't any changes though. The MSN shortcut on the desktop gets a new icon, and going into the start menu reveals a new application pinned at the top, TV Viewer. This was a prototype of the Web TV application that was offered as an optional component in Windows 98. 
if you had a TV tuner card installed in your system, you were able to use this application to watch interactive TV. This early version will open up, but the program itself is not functional, and the buttons on the front page don't do anything. The text on the left side makes reference to a video that is supposed to be on the right. What we have instead though is a script of that video, presumably used as a placeholder until the video was completed. Now since the entire application is HTML based, we can take a look at the individual web pages that would display when navigating around the program. These offer a glimpse at what this early version of the program would look like. As I mentioned earlier, Windows 98 was the first version of Windows to include support for ACPI power management, and this build includes a new power option setting in the control panel. This allows you to set up multiple power schemes by changing how long the system will wait to turn off certain devices. The second tab, Power Switches, usually lets you change what happens when you press the power button, although this iteration of the tool only lets you change what closing the lid of your laptop does, even though this is installed on a desktop computer. Windows 98 Build 1546 is a Beta 2 build compiled on July 25, 1997. About two months have passed since the last build we discussed. The initial setup process is almost identical to the final release of Windows 98, with the exception of the fly-in text blurbs that are still animated and the icons used on the left side. However, all mentions of Memphis on these screens have been changed to say Windows 98. It's the same story with the boot screen. Although it's in the same design that we saw in the last build, it now says Windows 98 Beta 2. The setup design continues after a reboot as the OS begins to detect hardware. When we log in for the first time, you'll discover a new icon on the desktop. No, it's not for World of Warcraft, it's actually an early version of the new welcome program. It plays a short video and refers to you by the name you entered in during setup at the top left. Just like in the setup process, you'll see most of the references to Memphis being changed to Windows 98, but not all. We can see Windows 98 in the logo and title bar, and Memphis in the text on the right side. Here, there are shortcuts to the registration wizard, the tune-up wizard, which would later be known as the maintenance wizard, the release notes, and the beta guide. Windows Explorer gets modified once again, looking more like what we saw in build 1415. However, the background graphic and sidebar are gone. Clicking on Help and About identifies the system as Windows 98, but the system property still says Memphis, and Winver still says Windows 95. On the taskbar, we can see that the quick launch has returned, this time with the Show Desktop icon. If we head into the Display properties, you'll notice that there are some additional tabs, and the Plus tab has been removed. Active Desktop is also available in this build, meaning that we can set an HTML document as our desktop background and enable Internet Explorer's channel bar. Clicking on one of these channels will open up Internet Explorer in a full screen interface. The Start menu also received some modifications. For one, the banner on the left side now says Windows 98, and Windows Update is now pinned at the top. The power management settings in the control panel get some additional options under the advanced tab, but most of these still pertain to portable machines. There's also a new users icon in the control panel, which can be used to create additional user accounts. The wizard itself looks just like the one in Windows 98, but the icon is different. Build 1593's setup process is pretty much identical to what we saw in the last build, however there have been some changes to the text blurbs as they are now in a smaller font, and the icons on the left sidebar have been changed. This is a very interesting build because it's actually not fully known if this is a Beta 2, Beta 2.1, or a Beta 3 release. It was compiled on September 22, 1997, and its boot screen, which is completely redesigned, identifies itself as a Beta 3 build. However, it was compiled only a few months after the last build we took a look at, 1546, which again is a Beta 2 build. Not only that, but there were a few builds compiled after this one that identify themselves as Beta 2.1 releases. Regardless, visual elements in this build are becoming more finalized. When we log in, the new welcome program will appear. Only this time it will actually take over the entire desktop with the full screen background. 
The full intro animation is not here yet, but the design looks just like what we saw in the final release. We can once again register, discover, launch the tune-up tool, view release notes, and the beta guide. Moving to the desktop, there are a few changes you'll notice right away. The version string is no longer seen at the bottom right, and the My Computer icon has changed. The normal icon would reappear in the next build. My Computer actually opens up in Internet Explorer, as seen in the title bar text for a brief second, and by the icon in the top right. It also has a new design. This once again isn't the final design, but it has similar functionality. Selecting an item will give you a brief description of it on the left side, and the current folder that you're in will display at the very top. In the system tray, there is a new power icon, which will open up the power management properties when clicked. This will show even on a desktop computer in this build, but it's quite obvious that this is intended for use on a portable machine. This build finally replaces the Memphis and Windows 95 references in all three About dialogs to now say Windows 98. Active Desktop is still here, but we lose the ability to set an HTML document as the desktop wallpaper from the Display Properties window. This would be fixed in the next build. Our last build to discuss in this video is 1619, a Beta 2.1 build compiled in October of 1997. The setup process still has the fly-in text animation, but everything else about the design appears to be finalized. The boot screen, aside from the Beta 2.1 branding and a Microsoft Internet Explorer subtext, is also finalized. The welcome program functions more like it did in the final release, as it no longer has a full screen background. However, the brief introduction animation is still not here. The build string has returned to the desktop, along with the proper My Computer icon. As for my computer itself, it actually loses the design we saw in the last build, but it would obviously regain the new design for the final release. It also still has the Internet Explorer logo in the top right, but functions like a regular 98 Explorer window does. Active Desktop is all here, as we can once again set an HTML document as the desktop wallpaper. Another slight change is in the layout of the Accessories folder in the Start menu. Many of the items in the System Tools folder have now been moved up one directory, but this would be changed in the final release. Eight months later, in May of 1998, Microsoft compiled the final release-to-manufacturing build of Windows 98. The build number was, fittingly, 1998. This was actually the same month that Microsoft was sued by the US government over allegations of the company holding a monopoly on the desktop operating system and web browser space. Despite this, Windows 98 was still released to the public on schedule one month later on June 25th, 1998. And it sold very well. Even though it was only available for six months in 1998, 15 million copies of Windows 98 were sold that year alone. But it didn't mean that people immediately stopped buying its predecessor, Windows 95, as Microsoft still offered it for sale, and computer OEMs still had it pre-installed on some of their machines. But this would obviously change as time went on. By the end of 1998, Windows 98 gained a substantial part of OS market share, holding almost 20%. In May of 1999, Microsoft would follow up with Windows 98 Second Edition. As this was branded as an updated version of Windows 98, it was offered to existing Windows 98 users for only $19.99, while users of any previous Windows version would have to pay the full price of $109. The last release of Windows based on the 9X kernel was Windows Me, released in September of 2000. Not long after that, Microsoft would move on from the MS-DOS-based era of consumer Windows versions with the release of Windows XP in 2001. So that's a look back at the development process that eventually led to the creation of Windows 98. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you in the next video.